All right, so this video is in regard to chasing piece pieces question. And it was regarding a video I did called a trick on how to not overeat. And her question was, and I believe the video is about basically delayed gratification with treats. And, and what it basically stated was, if you say that impulsively you want the milkshake today, because again, almost always impulsive desires for food are coming from your lower brain. It's not coming from the logical, well thought out system that you have when you make your plan for the day. This is why a day starts out so well and then it goes awry at some point, right? It's because the lower brain got involved. You had stress, you had an uncomfortable moment, something was said, something happened, and now we're using food to make ourselves feel better. So in this case, her, her question was, if I say I can have the milkshake on Tuesday, my lower brain might show up and say, but you may not want it on Tuesday, so have it today. And her concern was, how do I navigate that? So here's how this goes. This is in no way, like your lower brain chatter will never go away. This is an important thing to, to keep hitting home. Your brain will always do this, always. Your job is to be aware of it and it's to learn how to kind of manage around it, right? To kind of dismiss it, not take it seriously. Remember the video we recorded where I talked about you're giving your lower brain the wrong status in your life and we talked about your uncle who's been in and out of prison versus the sage advice. Your goal is to start to get to where you're like, it's a nonsensical voice. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. It talks, but it doesn't really mean anything. So when you're thinking about this, okay, today you're driving along, you pass a milkshake place, thought comes up, ooh, milkshake, you love milkshakes. You've, you've enjoyed milkshakes in the past. You go, you know, lower brain, that is an impulsive decision. I don't need to have a milkshake today. I didn't pre-plan a milkshake today. I'm gonna plan it for tomorrow or I'm gonna plan it for Tuesday. And then the lower brain, let's just say that we're talking about this individual who sent in the question. She's saying her lower brain might come back and say, yeah, but you're probably not going to want it tomorrow. You're not going to want it Tuesday. There's a lot of fact in that actually, because that's exactly what happened to me. You're making it available to yourself at another time. You may not want it. There was a lot of days I did delayed gratification and I said no to my lower brain in the day. Like, okay, because what, what I started to actually learn about myself is 80% of the time, the things that I thought I had to have in the moment, <laughs> the milkshake, the bag of M&Ms, the whatever, when time had passed and I'm looking at my next day, I actually didn't really want it, which kind of helped me realize how faulty the lower brain craving and desires were. They really were nonsensical. They didn't, they didn't mean anything. But let's just say this is a concern you have. What you say is, you know what, lower brain? You might be right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plan a milkshake in for the next two weeks, every single day. We're going to put that sucker on paper. We're going to plan it into our day. We're going to have it written out. You give yourself the opportunity to have a milkshake on purpose every day. And what will eventually happen is most days you're not going to want it. Most days because it's actually something that you're making the decision to have, you've planned it in, you see it's three or 400 or 500 calories. You are, you are contemplating this decision with a logical brain. Most often you're not gonna want it. But on the day that you actually do want it, guess what? It's pre-planned in and there isn't any struggle. The more that we can drop the struggle and the drama around food, the easier that this process becomes. Because you're not sitting there every day doing a tug of war between your lower brain and your higher brain and trying to get this whole, you're just like, hey, you know what? I tend to like milkshakes. Honestly, this would fix a lot of problems for a lot of people. The foods you kind of fixate about, your, your lower brain goes to, if you just pre-planned it in every day for two weeks or a month, and you gave yourself the option to make the decision if you wanted it or not, by the end of the month, I just had this happen actually. Um, I had a coaching client. I had a coaching client do this with Oreos. She planned them in every single day for like two months. By the end of the two months, she didn't want it anymore. Reese's Cups. I have another client. She was like, just like when I said, you know, let's have treats every day. She planned in Reese's Cups every day. I want to say about two months. 
And then I noticed she stopped putting them in there. And I said, what happened to the Reese's Cups? I kind of got bored with them, believe it or not. So she ended up, and you think to yourself, this could never happen. <laughs> like, I love this food. How could this happen? I have witnessed it over and over and over again. We get fixated on these foods. They feel like they're off limits. Our lower brain throws them up constantly. We feel like we're fighting against it. It's this big production. If you put it in your food log every day, Reese's cups, Oreos, milkshake, and you give yourself permission to have it, doesn't mean you have to. No one's standing there with a gun to your head saying you got to eat it. You give yourself permission. And if you go, if you come up at bedtime and you notice, you know what? I didn't eat those Reese's cups today. Or I only had one out of two because I really wasn't jonesing for them as much as I normally would. You can delete what you don't eat. But that's not how our brain works. Our brain works with rigidity, tightness. Uh, we're going to fix this problem. And so we start out the day with the perfect day. We're hitting the 16, 1800 calories. We're doing all the things. But then this talk comes up. Reese's cups, milkshake, oh, must have. And then when we go to put that thing in, oh my gosh, all my numbers are screwed up. I overeat today. I didn't hit a calorie deficit. I'll say maybe eight out of 10 people then go, you know what? Let's just keep this party going. Let's just keep eating all the things that we can't normally eat on a good day. And we might not even track those things. We'll just party hardy <laughs> and, then, and then start again tomorrow, right? But what we've been saying from day one is you could do the opposite. Plan in all the fun foods. Plan the higher calories. Actually, you might even go over maintenance. Craziness, because you have the control to do that. And, and you'll say, but Heather, that won't get me to my weight loss goal. Yeah, but what you're doing isn't anyway. So what difference does it make, right? Like, let's be totally honest. If you're eating food and not tracking it, and you know you're exceeding your calorie limit most often because you're doing these behaviors, you're not doing what you think you're doing. You're doing something else. So if you actually wrote the plan out, milkshake every day, after the course of a month, you're gonna be like, okay, maybe I don't feel so anxious around the milkshakes anymore. Maybe I even had two or three of them in the course of a month and I enjoyed them. Your lower brain will quiet down about that because it's not as restricted, it's not as off limits. It's not that point of contention. So I hope this helps. Um, again, you, you, you can outsmart the system a little bit by understanding how it works. How does it work? You feel discomfort. Go back to the first few videos on how my thinking leads to eating. You feel, you have a thought, I need to lose weight, need to get this under control, need to fix this problem. This is a problem at work. This is a problem with my spouse. This is a problem with my kids. Problem, problem, problem. Lower brain goes into action to fix said problem. It's not good at that. <laughs> And then you feel more anxious and stressed because it starts to throw out all the shoulds at you. This is what you should be doing. This is how it has to be fixed. Da, 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 da. Rattles off all the stuff. Your anxiety and stress level goes up. Then it comes in to save the day. How does it do that? Oh, you're feeling anxious and stressed. I know what fixes that. I am going to go ahead and suggest we eat Oreos or milkshakes or Reese's cups or whatever because that historically has made this person feel better for like a nanosecond because it does and then guess what those feelings don't go away they stay there this is what leads to overeating and this is what can sometimes lead to binge eating and other problematic eating behaviors so how do you get out of the cycle you stop listening <laughs> you put on earmuffs and you're like hey i'm not listening to you anymore because i realize you really don't have your own life together. Like if you're, again, personifying here, if you're thinking of Uncle Bob that's coming out of prison for the third or fourth time, I'm not really gonna take your advice. It's not good advice, right? You start to see it through a different lens. So I hope this video helps. I am here to assist. If you have questions, do what, uh, what, what uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the name, it was P something, but drop the question below. A lot of times I can just answer those in a video. And I'm here to help. Please like and share the videos. I will talk to you soon.